Every civilization has feared one color, not red for blood, not black for death, but the invisible glow that hums beneath the surface of all matter, radiation, the whisper inside every atom that someday learns how to die. From the cold heart of stars to the ticking of a Geiger counter in an abandoned hospital, the world runs on things falling apart. Every flicker of light, every burst of heat, every heartbeat exists because somewhere, something unstable decides to let go. In this video, let's break down the stages between atomic birth and atomic silence, a timeline of energy, extinction, and evolution. Level 1. When atoms discover mortality. Before life, before continents, before air, the universe was still learning how to cool. In those early seconds after the Big Bang, billions of unstable isotopes blinked in and out of existence, fighting for balance. Most found peace. Some never did. Those that couldn't stabilize became radioactive, atoms with too much inside to stay still. They're nature's restless children, shedding pieces of themselves to survive. Fast forward 13.8 billion years. Earth hums with their ghostly rhythm. Each second, about 8,000 radioactive decays occur in every kilogram of soil. Even your own body, your bones, your blood, releases over 4,000 decays per second, mostly from potassium-40, a natural isotope that's been glowing inside humans since the first cell divided. But it wasn't until 1896 that we noticed. French physicist Henri Becquerel placed a uranium-coated plate in a drawer next to photographic film. Days later, the film darkened. No sunlight, no exposure. Just invisible energy, escaping stone. A year later, Marie and Pierre Curie named it radioactivity. They spent years isolating it, glowing faintly in their lab, never realizing the price their own bodies were paying. The first level of radioactivity isn't destruction, it's discovery. The universe teaching us that even matter has a half-life. Level 2. Three ghosts, one graveyard. Once we learned that atoms could die, we learned how they spoke. Alpha, beta, gamma. Three dialects of decay. Alpha, the heavy whisper. Two protons, two neutrons, a helium core ejected at 15,000 kilometers per second. It can't pass through paper, but if it enters your lungs, it rewrites your cells forever. Beta, the sharp spark, a high-speed electron fired from a collapsing neutron. It slices through skin, changing atoms into new elements. Gamma, the ghost light, pure energy, a photon so powerful that meters of concrete barely slow it. It doesn't knock on doors, it phases through walls. Together, they form a trinity of transformation, mass to energy, element to element, stability to silence. By the 1930s, scientists realized these ghosts weren't curses, they were tools. Gamma rays sterilized surgical equipment. Beta decay became the key to nuclear medicine. Alpha emitters powered early spacecraft batteries. The same energy that mutates DNA also keeps newborns alive in neonatal wards through technetium 99M scans, a medical isotope that traces blood flow inside a beating heart. Radioactivity isn't always about death. Sometimes, it's how we see life from the inside. Level 3. The stone that powers empires, buried in granite and deserts. Uranium-238 is Earth's oldest heartbeat. It's half-life, 4.5 billion years, the same age as the planet itself. Each atom of uranium holds 200 million electron volts of energy, enough that a single kilogram could produce the same power as 3 million kilograms of coal. For centuries, it slept unnoticed in the crust until in 1972, in Gabon, Africa, scientists found something impossible. A two-billion-year-old natural nuclear reactor in a uranium-rich cave called Oklo, groundwater slowed neutrons just right, and the reaction self-sustained for hundreds of thousands of years, burning naturally, recycling fuel, releasing heat. Proof that nature made nuclear power long before we did, yet uranium is the paradox of our age, the atom that warms cities and scars landscapes. In April 1986, its fission tore open Chernobyl's reactor number, four spewing radioactive clouds across Europe. The explosion released 400 times more radiation than Hiroshima. Even today, trees in the Red Forest near Pripyat hum faintly with decay. Uranium is civilization's mirror, ancient, powerful, patient, and utterly indifferent to who wields it. Level 4. The element that glowed and killed. 
When Marie and Pierre Curie isolated radium from tons of pitchblende in 1898, the world saw magic in the dark, a metal that glowed on its own, warm to the touch, shining in hospital wards and shop windows alike. Factories soon painted radium on watch dials, airplane instruments, even children's toys. In the 1920s, the workers, young women known as the Radium Girls, licked their brushes to make the paint fine and sharp. Their smiles glowed in the dark. Their bones did too. Years later, their jaws disintegrated, their teeth fell out, and autopsies revealed their skeletons were still radioactive decades after burial. Each atom of radium decays into radon gas, a silent killer that seeps from basements and mines, responsible for 21,000 lung cancer deaths per year in the US alone. The world learned the hard way. Light can be lethal and beauty can burn from within. But radium also paved the way for nuclear medicine, for understanding bone cancers and isotopic tracers. It gave us the blueprint of radiotherapy and the warning label for human ambition. Level 5 the element that ended a war and began a new one. Where uranium is natural, plutonium is conjured. It does not exist in nature in usable form. It must be born in the heart of reactors created when uranium absorbs one more neutron than it should. In 1940, chemists Seaborg, Kennedy, and Wall synthesized plutonium-239, a metal denser than lead, hotter than logic. When enough of it gathers together, it ignites a chain reaction faster than light can warn you. On August 9, 1945, that reaction flattened Nagasaki. The Fat Man bomb released energy equal to 21,000 tons of TNT. A few kilograms vaporized a city. Yet the same isotope now powers the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft, still traveling beyond the solar system, running on the slow, patient decay of plutonium heat. The element that annihilated a generation also lights the edge of interstellar space. That's the paradox. Radioactivity doesn't choose sides. It's the user who decides whether decay becomes destruction or discovery. Plutonium burns hotter than history, and like history, it cannot be undone, only endured. Level 6. The fallout you can't see, but can't escape. When atoms break, they leave fingerprints. Cesium-137 is one of them a daughter of uranium's fission, light enough to float in clouds deadly enough to stay in your bones for decades. Its half-life is 30 years, but its legacy lasts far longer. After Chernobyl in 1986, cesium spread over 200,000 square kilometers of Europe. In Belarus, milk contained cesium for 25 years after the accident. In Japan, following Fukushima 2011, contaminated soil and seawater carried cesium across the Pacific. In California, trace isotopes were detected 6,000 miles away, too weak to harm, but proof that no border can stop an atom in the wind. Each decay emits gamma rays at 662 kilo electron volts, strong enough to penetrate walls weak enough to remain undetected until the sickness sets in. Cesium turns land into memory. Forests grow again, animals return, but hunters must carry dosimeters, and mushrooms glow faintly under ultraviolet light. Decades later, wolves roam Pripyat freely, their bodies carrying ten times the normal cesium levels. Yet thriving, adapted, alive, even contamination evolves. At level 6, radioactivity stops being event and becomes environment. Not explosion, but inheritance. The invisible dust that binds generations together, the quiet price of progress. Level 7. When fallout enters the body, Radiation isn't just an external storm, it finds its way inside. When nuclear reactors fail or bombs detonate, clouds of iodine-131 swirl into the air. A radioactive isotope that mimics the iodine our bodies crave, our thyroids, built to store nutrients, absorb poison instead. Its half-life is only eight days, but it's enough to change generations. After the Chernobyl disaster, children in Ukraine and Belarus drank milk laced with iodine-131. Within years, thyroid cancers in children increased by over 400%. In some villages, entire classrooms vanished from attendance records. The cruel irony? That same isotope, harnessed, measured, controlled, now saves millions of lives. Every year, hospitals use iodine-131 to treat hypothyroidism and thyroid cancer destroying disease tissue with the same precision nature once used for chaos. One atom 
Two fates, healing or haunting. At level 7, the radioactive world isn't distant. It's personal. It breathes with us and through us. Level 8, a grain of poison that glows. If uranium is the mountain and plutonium the weapon, polonium-210 is the whisper. It's one of the most toxic substances ever discovered, 250 billion times more poisonous than cyanide. Invisible, tasteless, releasing alpha particles so dense they shred tissue cell by cell. It doesn't need grams. A single microgram, the size of a dust moat, is a death sentence. In 2006, in a London hotel, former Russian spy Alexander Litvinenko sipped tea laced with polonium-210. He died three weeks later, his hair gone, his marrow destroyed, his body still radioactive at burial. Ironically, it was Marie Curie who first isolated polonium in 1898, naming it after her homeland, Poland. She carried it in test tubes in her pockets, writing in her journal by the soft blue glow of decay. Her notebooks, even today, over a century later, remain too radioactive to handle without protection. Polonium proves that radioactivity doesn't only reshape nature, it reshapes morality, turning curiosity into weaponry, knowledge into power, power into silence. Level 9. Splitting one to awaken millions. In December 1942, under the bleachers of a football stadium at the University of Chicago, a quiet Italian physicist named Enrico Fermi stacked uranium bricks and graphite slabs in a careful lattice. When he inserted the final control rod, the pile went critical. The world's first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction. A single neutron hit a uranium atom. That atom split, releasing three more neutrons. Each of those split others. A cascade of invisible fire. It was called Chicago Pile 1. Primitive, silent, world-changing. From that moment, humanity became a participant in atomic evolution. Every nuclear reactor today, all 440 of them across 32 countries, is an echo of that experiment. Together, they generate about 10% of global electricity, powering 800 million homes without burning a single gram of carbon. But the same physics that lights cities also erase them. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and more than 2,000 nuclear test detonations across the 20th century, turning deserts into glass and oceans into memory. The chain reaction is the ultimate paradox, a technology that could end fossil fuels or end everything. The line between progress and annihilation is measured in milliseconds of neutron speed. Level 10. Energy's shadow. Every miracle leaves a mess. For nuclear energy, that mess glows. Each year, humanity produces over 12,000 tons of high-level radioactive waste, spent fuel rods that will remain deadly for 100,000 years, you can't burn it. You can't neutralize it. You can only bury it and pray that memory lasts longer than radiation. In Finland, engineers are sealing the Onkolo repository, a labyrinth carved 400 meters into bedrock, lined with copper canisters that will outlive every modern nation. They call it the world's first eternal tomb. Scientists debate how to warn the future. Should we leave signs, skulls and warnings? Or nothing at all, lest curiosity undo us again? One proposal suggested an entire culture of symbols, don't dig here, do not disturb. Nothing of value lies below. But human nature is the most radioactive force of all. We are drawn to the forbidden glow. Somewhere, a thousand centuries from now, someone or something might break those seals and rediscover the fire we buried. At level 10, the problem isn't the atom, it's amnesia. Level 11, mutation, nature's response. Radiation doesn't only destroy life, it rewrites it. The same energy that cracks DNA also triggers the mutations that drive evolution. Every living thing on Earth is a survivor of radiation, from cosmic rays to volcanic isotopes. Without mutation, there is no adaptation. Without radiation, there is no life as we know it. After Chernobyl, scientists expected the exclusion zone to become a dead world. Instead, it became a paradoxical sanctuary. Wild horses gallop through empty villages. Boars root through radioactive soil. Wolves, now free from human threat, roam at 10 times their normal population density. In 2016, researchers discovered something extraordinary. Fungi that feed on radiation. These species, rich in melanin, convert gamma rays into chemical energy, essentially photosynthesis. 
but for decay. They grow on the walls of Chernobyl's reactors, thriving where humans cannot. Radiation, it seems, is not just a destroyer, it's an artist, carving new forms out of chaos. Even our cells remember it. Every breath of Raiden, every cosmic ray, leaves molecular scars that sculpt future generations. Life doesn't fight radiation. It learns to dance with it. Level 12. From decay to design. After a century of fear and fallout, humanity stands again at the edge of invisible fire. But this time, with understanding. We no longer chase destruction, we're chasing control. Scientists are building the next generation of reactors, thorium-based systems that can't melt down, and fusion reactors that mimic the heart of the sun. At the ITER project in France, 35 nations collaborate to ignite a star on Earth. Inside its magnetic chamber, plasma will swirl at 150 million degrees Celsius, 10 times hotter than the sun's core. If it works, one glass of seawater could provide enough hydrogen to power a human life from birth to death. No smoke, no waste, no meltdown. Fusion, the opposite of fission, doesn't tear atoms apart. It unites them, creation instead of decay. Yet, even here, the old patterns remain. Funding delays, politics, fear. The same human variables that haunted the first chain reaction. But progress isn't linear. It's radioactive. It decays, it stabilizes, it glows again. Our future may not be powered by uranium or plutonium, but by the same principle they taught us, that inside every atom lies both chaos and creation waiting for permission to begin. Every radioactive element tells the same story, from uranium's billion-year hum to polonium's instant whisper. Each one is a reminder that stability is temporary and that life itself is born from imbalance. Without radioactivity, there would be no volcanoes, no tectonic motion, no magnetic field to shield us from solar winds. In a sense, radiation doesn't threaten life, it sustains it. The glow beneath everything isn't death, it's memory, the memory of stars, the echo of beginnings, and the promise that everything unstable still finds a way to shine.